In this video, I'll show you how to create an animation and cause damage to players for your tool you just created in the last video. If you don't know how to create a tool yet, click on the info card in the top right corner to watch an extensive video. First, we'll create an animation by going to the Avatar tab and clicking Animation Editor. Before doing so, make sure that the tool we created in the last video is in the NPC, i.e. an R15 avatar. You can take an avatar from the toolbox, use my NPC kit V1.8, or create your own avatar or a block avatar at Rig Builder. Now click on the avatar with the hammer that is in the rig and create an animation and name it as you want. I'm not a big animator, but I'm trying to make progress, piece by piece. And this is just to serve as an example for test purposes. When you're done, change the animation priority to Action and copy the animation ID. I call my test animation Hammer Action Animation. Create an animation in my hammer, i.e. my tool, and copy the animation ID into it. I call this animation Hammer Animation. Now look for a sound to play as soon as the player presses left click and plays the animation of the tool. Name the sound you just inserted to hammer sound, or the name you want. Now create a local script in the object tool. We're going to start programming now. I will explain everything to you piece by piece. The script begins by declaring a local variable player that references the local player in the game, which is obtained through game, players.localPlayer. Next, a loop is started that waits until the player's character is loaded. This is obtained through player.character. The loop will continue to run until the player's character is available. Once the player's character is available, another local variable character is declared, which references the player's character. Another variable humanoid is declared, which references the humanoid object of the player's character. Another variable cooldown is declared and set to false. This variable is used to check if the player has already performed an action and cannot repeat it yet. Another variable animation is declared, which references the hammer animation animation in the script's parent. The script then waits for the activation event of the script's parent. When the event is triggered, the function bound to the event is executed. In this function, it is checked whether the cooldown variable is set to false. If it is, the cooldown variable is set to true to prevent the action from being repeated. Next, the hammer animation animation is loaded and played. This is done using the load animation method of the humanoid object to load the animation and then the play method to play the animation. After that, the hammer swing event event is fired on the server to notify the server that the player has performed the action. Finally, the wait function is used to wait for one second before setting the cooldown variable back to false, allowing the action to be performed again. Now create the remote event mentioned in the script and rename it exactly to the names as defined in the script. Speak Hammer Swing Event. Now create a second script, which is also in the tool, and write the following code, which I will also explain to you step by step. This script is a server-side script that listens for the hammer swing event event, which is fired by the client-side script when the player swings their hammer. When the hammer swing event event is received on the server, the function connected to the event is executed. This function takes one argument player, which is the player who triggered the event. The first line of the function plays the hammer sound sound effect, which is a child of the script's parent. The second line sets the value of the can damage boolean value to true. This value is likely used to indicate that the player's hammer is currently in a state where it can deal damage to other players or objects. The script then waits for 0.3 seconds using the wait function. This is likely to give the hammer swing animation time to complete before allowing the player to deal damage again. Finally, the value of can damage is set back to false indicating that the player's hammer is no longer in a state where it can deal damage. Now insert a bool value and rename it to can damage. A bool value is a data type in Roblox that stores a boolean value, i.e. a value that is either true, true, or false, false. 
A bool value is often used to store a state or condition in a game, such as whether a player owns a specific item or not, whether a specific mechanism is activated or deactivated, whether a player has completed a specific task or not. A bool value can be used in a script to check conditions and perform specific actions when the value is true or false. Now create a new script, which is located in the tool that allows the damage with the tool using a hitbox. This code first creates an empty table called debounce table. It then waits for a child named hitbox in the parent script and connects an event named touched with a function. When an object touches the hitbox, the function is called and receives the touching object as a parameter. The function checks if the touching object has a parent object. If so, it checks if the parent object has a child named humanoid. If so, this means that the touching object is a player character. The function then checks if the parent object is already in the debounce table. If so, this means that the player character has already taken damage in the last two seconds, and the function immediately returns without performing any further actions. If the parent object is not in the debounce table, it is added, and the player character takes 30 damage. The function then waits two seconds before removing the entry from the debounce table. This prevents the player character from taking damage again in the next two seconds if they touch the hitbox again. To create a hitbox, you simply copy an existing part, whether mesh part or a normal part, and enlarge and position it where you want the hitbox of the tool to be, i.e., where the damage is caused. Rename this part to hitbox, and make sure that this part is also connected to a weld constraint, i.e., part 0, sow, handle, and part 1, sow, hitbox part. Double check that all parts of your tool are not anchored. If they are, the tool won't work. Then, all you have to do is move the tool to starter pack. As you can see, the animation and sound plays smoothly, and the R15 characters take damage. The animation is not the best, but I just wanted to show you how something like this is possible. Thank you for watching. Until next time.